This is Sully's first national championship, folks, <laughs> so be kind. Okay. Well, I tell you what, I sat over there, and it, it's almost anticlimactic after that great game Saturday night, UNLV getting beat by Duke. Uh, Duke probably, they're sitting there thinking, uh, hey, it's time to start thinking about next year because they'll probably be number one. Well, it has been a long time coming. Tom Suter is out there in the cold, and uh, boy, I tell you, Tom, you're probably feeling a little warmed up still from that one, though. I'll tell you what, it was a great ball game. Donna's sitting here with me uh, because uh, you want to see the highlights, don't you? That's exactly what it is. That's the only way I can see the game. I'll tell you what, it was a great ball game by the Duke Blue Devils. Uh, the Blue Devils are the national champions. We have some uh, pictures to show you, so let's roll the videotape. What you'd expect from a championship game, a tense fever pitch atmosphere at the Hoosier Dome. Duke starts quickly. Bobby Hurley, alley oop, Grand Hill, one hand, boom! Kansas has a player in Mark Randall. Running hook shot. Yes. Now it's 13 11. Duke with Brian Davis, the knifing drive. Good. And Bobby Hurley for three. Got it. A seven point Duke lead. But the Jayhawks right there. Downtown. Terry Brown shooting the triple. 26 25. Duke. But the rest of the half belongs to the Blue Devils. Hurley for three. Got it. Billy McCaffrey for three more. A nine-point Duke lead. Now, 39-34. Time running down in the half. Thomas Hill, the triple. You bet. Duke, 42-34. Halftime. Second half, Duke keeps the pressure on. McCaffrey is hot for three more. The lead is still eight. And then Brian Davis, Jamberger, a 10-point Duke advantage. And the Devils playing that defense. Hurley, the interception to the breaking. McCaffrey to the layup. The lead is 12. Duke is on its way. No more a bridesmaid. The Devils are national champions. Happy Duke University basketball team. They are indeed the national champions. Uh, some scoring totals are Christian Leitner, 18 points, including 12 out of 12 from the free throw line. Billy McCaffrey off the bench with 16. Bobby Hurley had 12. Uh, Grand Hill had 10. Balance scoring for Duke. The rebounds about even. Duke shot 56% for the game from uh, all, uh, what, what's, what's the word I want to say, uh, all total and 60% uh, from three-point range. The Blue Devils, as I said earlier, were hot from three-point range. Now, Bob Holliday was on the court after the ball game and talked with the Blue Devils, Thomas Hill. When did you know you had it? I mean, you were up quite a ways, but they really pushed you at the end. When the last buzzer went off, that's when, that's when I knew we really had them. I mean, Kansas played an extraordinary game, and they never gave up, and we expected that. Can you put into words how you feel right now? I feel so good. It's like a, a sigh of relief that we, you know, we finally won it, and I'm so proud of, of our program, the guys in it, and I'm just happy for Coach K that, you know, he won it. He you, won. Put, you played such a great game to beat the defending champions. Did it actually put a little pressure on you coming into the championship game that, to be the favorite? Not really. Um, we we just we blew off what everybody said and, and concentrated on being intense and just coming out and. and working hard for 40 minutes, and I think we did that for the most part. We're looking forward to seeing the students back at Duke tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I got a glimpse of them earlier, and they were going crazy. <laughs> All right, this is uh, the bulk of our crew that was here in Indianapolis for, it seems like, for seven months, but it's only, <laughs> but it's only about a week. Jeff Gravley is still at the Hoosier Dome uh, getting some post-game comments and work, but uh, Bob Holliday, uh, you were at courtside with me. We watched the ball game. I'd just like to hear your impressions. Uh, the Blue Devils are relieved. Uh, talk to Billy King and Quinn Snyder. They're relieved, happy. Uh, Duke played about as well as it can offensively. Uh, defensively, you have to give Kansas a lot of credit. They didn't have a good offensive game. Duke dominated all the statistics, and yet somehow it was only a seven-point game, and Kansas uh, had Duke scrambling there at the end. You saw Brian Davis say, uh, Coach, we got it for you. We got it for you. The monkey is definitely off Duke's back. I think the monkey is definitely off uh, Duke's back. And, Jay, uh, you got to feel like uh, this team's going to be heard from for years to come. Well, Bob, I mean, you've, uh, the two seniors, Clay Buckley and Greg Kubek, uh, all the other guys are back. I mean, this is an awesome team. They've got Cherokee Parks coming in, Eric Meek. This is going to be at one heck of a ball club. Tom, what did you think about the, uh, the one stretch of the game where Brian Davis seemed to kind of take control of the game? He got this alley-oop slam. 
He went to the, drew a foul, went to the free throw line, had a big defensive rebound, and then had, had an hit, assist to Leitner, and that really kind of set the tempo in the second half, even though Kansas did have the comeback. You know, Brian Davis has played well this whole tournament. He's kind of an inspirational leader for him. He comes in off the bench. You know, he wears number 23. He wears the sweatband up and, here. And the I bad, just like Michael Jordan. I believe Jordan. he thinks yep. he's Michael Jordan. And uh, he ignited. He was the real key to the win against uh, UNLV with 15 points off the bench. He came in in the first half. He looked for the basket. He knifed to the basket. He had a jam. Uh, he really played excellent basketball. But when he comes in, though, he fires yeah, exactly. them up. Exactly. And I don't know if you saw it after the game. He came up and he hugged Coach K. He put his arms around him and said, we got it for you, Coach. Yeah. We got this one for you. And so I really think that said a lot about, you know, what this, this team wanted to win it for for Coach K as much as they wanted to win it for themselves. Sure, and the fans obviously helped them out. I wanted to ask you, Bob, you've covered, what, about 40 of these Final Fours <laughs> now in your career. How does this compare to the other ones, the excitement, the fan support, that sort of thing? Well, I think this is a little different from NC State's in that that game was in doubt. NC State was the underdog until the final dunk. In this game, Duke was the favorite. and in, in a way, the championship game was Saturday against Nevada Las Vegas. Then Duke simply had to hold on and beat Kansas. Kansas gave it a great shot. Duke did hold on. Uh, my favorite picture was Brian Davis running into the crowd. We've talked about the great love affair between this team and its crowd. Uh, there was a sign that said, UNLV national champs. It had it marked through Duke national <laughs> champs. Brian went in, got the sign, brought it out. And by the way, I thought Brian might have been uh, put on the all-tournament team. I don't know. Have you guys talked well, about that? We have not talked about it, but Billy McCaffrey, now you talk about reserves coming in off the bench. Billy McCaffrey came in 16 points in the first half. Uh, he had a couple of threes, hit some more in the second half, uh, really played well. Duke got good play off his bench, and as what Jay said, he mentioned Eric Meeks and Cherokee Parks, two of the top-rated big men in the country coming to Duke next year. The Devils are going to be loaded. Christian Leitner, MVP. Bobby Hurley could have been MVP. He was a, a top choice. Uh, Billy McCaffrey did make the all-tournament team. It could have gone to Brian Davis. Hard to argue with Billy. Uh, the other choice is Mark Randall of Kansas and uh, Anderson Hunt of UNLV. You, you asked about the, talked about the fans. So just a few minutes ago, there were fans <laughs> with no shirts on jumping into this fountain behind us. Yeah, is that I not saw crazy? the Duke on their sweatshirts, and they ended up with no shirts on, Cameron and the Crazy's women were, were covered with yeah, water. Yeah, Cameron yeah. Crazy's up here in Indianapolis. No question about it. Probably had SAT scores of 13-10. <laughs> no question about it. You guys did a wonderful job. We appreciate you all and the folks behind the cameras here and inside Live Star. Too we many had a great dimensions. crew here this week. Absolutely. Really Everybody worked hard. Back to you, Charlie. Yeah, I mean, sorry, all. Rick. All right. <laughs> we're all here. <laughs> well, and I guess uh, this is only the beginning because tomorrow it's going to be celebration number two at Duke, and we will be live uh, from Durham tomorrow for that, and I suppose we'll probably have some little miniature parades. We'll have something going on all week long, I'm sure. Yeah, and we'll follow it all. Thank you very much, and we'll be back with more in just a moment.